So uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining. So my thanks for everything. And yes. So we are going to uh, to share the uh, the presentation. I will start, and then uh, Matthias will take uh, Matthias will follow. Okay, so uh, let's start. This is the outline of our presentation. We are going to uh, provide one slide introduction to proteomics. To I mean, it's, uh, as you can imagine, very brief. Then we are going to talk about the uh, new Elixir proteomics community. Then we are going to uh, give all the details about the implementation study, and then we will finish by outlining our plans for the near future in the context of this implementation study, but also in the wider context of the uh, proteomics community. Okay, so uh, just for those of you who uh, don't know much about proteomics, uh, proteomics is the high throughput um, study of uh, a proteome. And uh, what information can uh, someone get exclusively through proteomics? So here you can see, uh, of course, uh, the information that one can gather is uh, protein expression in time and space, uh, information about protein-protein interactions, post-processional modifications that are key for may, many biological functions, for instance, uh, phosphorylation is uh, the most studied one, or of course, information about the uh, protein localization in the cell, dynamics, and turnover. Uh, the main technology used in, in proteomics today is mass spectrometry. Uh, I'm not going to explain in detail uh, the workflow. There's no, I mean, no need to do this now in the context of this talk. But I uh, just wanted to, to make sure that mass spectrometry is not the only technology that can be used to, to do proteomics. Uh, uh, there is also a lot of people uh, working uh, in um, antibody-based proteomics. But of course, mass spec provides a level of high throughput that uh, antibody-based uh, proteomics cannot provide. And the last thing I wanted to highlight is that, of course, proteins uh, represent uh, most of uh, drug targets. So in, in the context of uh, uh, drug discovery, of course, uh, the proteins are, are the key. So the second point after this slide is to, uh, I really want to give an introduction about the Elixir proteins community. So the community was appro approved on September last year. We are one of the new communities together with uh, Metabolomics and Galaxy. And uh, the main goal of the, of the community is to develop and maintain sustainable proteomics tools and data resources. An essential part of the development, of course, is the verification of the resources, so of course making all the resources fair. I don't need to explain what fair is at this point, I think. And of course, uh, from, from our point of view, the, the most important point also was to integrate proteomics bioinformatics activities in the context of Elixir. Because I think it was quite important for, for the field, but also uh, uh, to Elixir as a whole. Because, of course, as I mentioned before, there is a lot of uh, ex exclusive information that can be gathered through, uh, through proteomics. So, just to give you a little bit, a bit more background about the community so, 11 Elixir nodes supported application. The community is uh, co led by uh, me, together with Oliver Kolbacher in Elixir Germany and Leonard Martens from. Elixir uh, Belgium. And again, uh, 11 different nodes supported the application in total. So if you want to know more about our plans for the future, we wrote a white paper in the in the F1000 Research Journal. It was published, I think, uh, almost one year ago now, mm -hmm. a bit less, I think. Yeah, it was like June last year. And here you can see everyone who participated in the initial kickoff meeting that uh, we had in Tübingen on March last year. To, uh, to basically prepare our plans. So I just wanted to say that. And uh, before explaining in detail the implementation study, I, I wanted to, uh, to mention that um, there are quite some resources that in, in Europe that are quite prominent for, uh, uh, for Elixir in the context of proteomics bioinformatics. We all know about the five Elixir platforms, data tools, compute interoperability and training. Uh, the only thing that I want to explain at this point is that uh, in, is those components are related to the data platform, because this implementation study is included in the data platform. So I thought that it was a good idea to highlight that uh, in the data platform, uh, um, uh, we could, uh, we could uh, say that uh, Pride is, is part of, of the data platform. Pride is the uh, world leading, the largest uh, data repository for uh, mass spec proteomics data. 
Uh, it was started many years ago in 2004-2005 at Leonard Martens. Um, it has really grown a lot over the years. We store uh, all uh, from, I mean, all relevant proteomics information, vector and protein expression information, post modifications, mass spectra, and any other type of technical and metadata. So one important thing that I wanted to highlight is that it was uh, one of the nominated Elixir core data resources. And, and this is the URL. And I think I forgot to, to mention because I, I, I thought it was obvious that the private database is based here at the at the ABI. So another point that I wanted to mention is that really there's a lot of uh, Euro, a European leadership in this context. So Pride, we have been leading the International Protein Exchange Consortium of Proteomics Repositories with the with the goal of uh, establishing a standard data submission and dissemination partners in the main proteomics resources. I just want to mention at this point that there are two resources in the U.S., Basel and Massive, and two in Asia, uh, IPROX in China and JPOS in Japan. But uh, PRIDE uh, here in GBI is by far the, the largest one. It contains approximately 85% of the data at present. And this is just, again, for those of you who are not really very familiarized with proteomics and what is really happening, this is just an evolution of the number of data sets submitted to, to PRIDE per, per month. And, and per year, and you can see that since 2012, 2013, really there has been really a, a, a very big increase. Just in 2017, uh, there were more than 200 data sets submitted per month. Most of the data comes from, of course, from human and the main other organisms, but there are more than a thousand different uh, uh, species represented. This is, uh, again, just to give you an idea of, of, the, of the data size uh, of proteomics at present in comparison with other types of data in the ABI. Of course, we are still one order of magnitude less than sequence data, so the ENA and the EGA, but as you can see, uh, the amount of data is available is really quite substantial at present already. And of course, the main point of having all this data stored is that uh, people in the community can reuse it. So, uh, and that's one of the main rationales uh, for when we were thinking about the, uh, this uh, implementation study. And um, you can see that, that really the, the amount of data that's used uh, is increasing also year per year. So it's not only that more and more data is stored, it's also that more and more data is, is reused. And uh, now I will, I will pass uh, uh, to Matthias, who will uh, talk about the actual work done in the context of the implementation study. Okay. So um, as the implementation study is funded within the LXU data platform, let me just uh, recapitulate uh, some of the platform previous prescribed goals. Um, one would be uh, the increased access and the linkage between publication and data, and also between data and other resources. Um, also promoting open access. So. Um, in that spirit, uh, our implementation study enabling automated processing and analysis of large-scale proteomics data um, is designed like that. Um, one of the focuses um, of the uh, is development of open, robust, and re reproducible data analysis uh, pipelines, including the cloud deployment, and first of all, uh, in our embassy cloud. Another focus um, is making data available for reuse um, uh, with the uh, analysis pipelines, um, and therefore private public data sets are made available um, within the embassy cloud um, as S3 uh, object stores uh, to remo remove the necessity um, to download and transfer all the data. Um, so uh, the stated goal is to have um, cloud workflows for um, standard identification, identifications, um, identifications for uh, PTMs, modification for uh, both label-free and label-based approaches, uh, quality control to um, a data uh, set interpretation and reanalysis evaluation, and um, having versions of uh, quantification approaches, including uh, PTMs, and topping this off uh, with a study demonstration uh, with public data, um, proteomics data from PRIDE. <clears throat> So to this end, um, the implementation study um, is consolidating uh, access and provision of robust analysis pipelines um, with a joint focus of um, free and scalable cloud deployment. And 
such cloud-based data analysis pipelines are particularly um, of uh, interest in uh, proteomics uh, for two complementary reasons. Uh, one would be the popularity of quantitative studies um, using high throughput uh, instruments across uh, extensive uh, replicates and or many different time points has led to very large uh, data volumes. And on the other hand, secondly, um, researchers are increase, increasingly uh, struggling with um, data processing uh, as current tools are poorly uh, scalable and researchers lack local compute infrastructure. Um, so these issues can be solved by providing modular cloud-based um, pipelines uh, that provide readily uh, accessible solutions along with the necessary uh, compute power to efficiently uh, process that data on demand. Um, <clears throat> having, having, having said that, um, to give you an example um, that uh, the other omics fields are also moving uh, in the same direction, there's the uh, Pan Cancer Project um, Cloud Workflow, which uh, comes uh, by a simplified command line workflow launcher based on consonants um, that encapsulates uh, the one workflow um, for Pan Cancer whole genome analysis. Um, going for Amazon cloud services and enabling direct comparison uh, and co-analysis with a larger uh, pan cancer data set. So um, that makes for quite convenient, fast, and not overly expensive uh, analysis um, when, uh, for example, running a, a 34 coverage whole genome alignment in about four days at uh, $10. $10. <clears throat> So um, to introduce what cloud environment is, let me use a less often used but um, more descriptive uh, definition of uh, infrastructure as a service. So uh, where the compute power uh, not necess necessarily uh, comes uh, from local but is remote, however still um, from some compute cent centers but uh, on a larger scale and probably distributed. Um, and the service is in regard to the is in, is in regard to the customer getting infrastructure, but it's virtualized. And this kind of abstraction layer is better utilization and scalability. But uh, the developer customer, which is us, um, has to interface is, um, with these abstraction layers, uh, which are namely OpenStack, Amazon Web Services, and the Google platform, just to name some. <clears throat> so coming back to the LAC proteomics community, um, the implementation study uh, covers the first focus area um, of, of the of the LHCR use case, um, which is soon to be uh, the LHCR proteomics community. Um, <clears throat> another prescribed point of this um, newly formed LHCR proteomics community is the integration of um, of other omics data. So um, Dynamics data is becoming increasingly uh, high fidelity, uh, meaning uh, in, in increase in resolution and detail as well as in the number of measurements um, for uh, a whole biological experiment. So this increased wealth of um, rather complementary information is opening up great opportunities um, for other fields of omics studies uh, to augment. Um, but it also imposes challenges of integration and certainly starting a uh, starting solution is to move analysis environments closer together um, to profit from combined systems. And another goal uh, of the community is uh, sharing proteomics and multi-omics data, uh, making this data available and findable uh, for a larger community means uh, not only making uh, the data sets accessible, but also the means to uh, co-analyze and re-evaluate re these data sets and to integrate into um, the field of transcending studies um, with a flattened learning curve um, <clears throat> uh, without uh, the buy-in of committing uh, to an entirety of a new field. Um, this will make it easier to integrate proteomics data with other omics um, data and um, to together with um, things like genes, metabolites, and other um, metascale entities. Um, in, the, in, in that spirit, uh, we based uh, the implementation study work on uh, what the phenomenal consortium members 
uh, did by integrating the metabolomics um, parts into uh, a galaxy portal for metabolomics mass spectrometry analysis uh, that lives within the cloud. And the workflow execution is based, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, the workflow execution is based on the Galaxy project, which is rendering uh, the overhead of integrating other tools available um, in the Galaxy tool shed uh, rather marginal. And overall, uh, this builds a flexible system uh, for on demand computation, <clears throat> deploying a workflow, one workflow at a time. And um, this also makes it the execution itself efficient and infrastructure conservative. Um, <clears throat> having said that, we also um, base our workflows on top of the OpenMS platform, uh, which is an open and versatile system for proteomics analysis. And it has some uh, nice features, um, <clears throat> which are mainly a tool modular modularization, and it has built in uh, solutions for the data handover between tools. Uh, with standardized um, proteomics standardization initiative um, formats and uh, readily available some uh, adapters for integrating third-party software as well, uh, including uh, search engines and um, other uh, tools which are um, used by the community. And then there is uh, already some form of uh, integration into various uh, workflow systems uh, to start from, and <clears throat> the whole system that we designed is uh, actually designed for dynamic growth, uh, uh, putting the tools into containers and deploying uh, the cloud's inherent properties of elastic infrastructure um, by integrating uh, proven analysis software um, into Kubernetes container orchestration. And when I uh, mention Kubernetes uh, container, um, orchestration, uh, let, me, um, let me introduce you to that. So um, through the containerization of those software tools, uh, we can base the pipeline on readily usable and um, already tested and versioned and well isolated software modules. And uh, orchestrating these containers, uh, connecting them with data, uh, with infrastructure and, if necessary, also with other containers that is done by Kubernetes. And this is a widely used system um, in, in many fields of industries and is uh, shown to work reliably in many um, large-scale scenarios and <clears throat> also working um, not only in cloud environments but also in HPC environments and others. So. Um, this kind of containerization of workflow steps um, makes the execution um, resource efficient and also version aware. And um, compute infrastructure can be added dynamically as needed um, since the infrastructure is set up on demand. So uh, this will overall bring the analysis uh, closer to the data. And <clears throat> Since workflow execution itself is based on Galaxy, uh, we were able to uh, construct those workflows in the, um, <clears throat> the Galaxy um, own system and copy them into our cloud system. And um, the mass of parameters that accumulate actually in, in, in such workflows when, when building um, is overwhelming to a new user. So um, this makes it imperative to select crucial parameters um, to create a robust uh, workflow and, um, <clears throat> and uh, yield them uh, for, for any user. Uh, this is still ongoing work, um, but uh, so speaking about uh, ongoing work, so the current status is um, that Sprite data connection um, is uh, being optimized into the cloud. Um, the workflows are deployed into the Ambil EBI Embassy Cloud Portal and fitted with the dashboard as a proof of concept. Um, conceptually, these workflows can be deployed in different uh, cloud infrastructures, but for now they are in uh, the Embassy Cloud. <clears throat> and as, a, as an outlook, um, these 
uh, these clouds can be uh, federated, so meaning uh, different cloud environments can be used in, in, in concert um, to reach scales um, which, are, which are really um, fit for uh, super large uh, data sets. <clears throat> um, yes, and um, to conclude, uh, let me introduce you to uh, what is coming in the near future. Um, so we have a follow-up uh, implementation study to this one, extending uh, those workflows with more tools and with a focus on uh, scaling out into other clouds. Um, this was in August um, 2018. Uh, will be uh, will be one year as most of the implementation studies are, and <clears throat> it is led by uh, Leonard Martins from Elixir Belgium, and uh, with uh, participation of Embed EBI Elixir Node and Alexia Germany, France, and Spain. And it will include many other tools which are um, commonly used in, in the proteomics community overall. <clears throat> and uh, we have another related implementation study coming up uh, that aims at improving data reusability uh, by improving public data set meta data annotation. And that will um, make running cloud analysis workflows uh, on a large scale and overall better and more reliably. <clears throat> so as you see, um, we will uh, go full circle with the targeted focus areas of the LSU programmers community, which are um, making available reproducible open analysis pipelines, integrating uh, multi-omics um, into the fold, and having data management and uh, annotation improved solutions. And wrapping it up, um, we can say that proteomics, bioinformatics activities in Europe are very prominent, prominent worldwide. Um, analysis infrastructure is a work in progress, and uh, plans for the future are data integration approaches with other uh, technologies uh, will continue, um, adding pipelines for other uh, popular experimental techniques <clears throat> will be uh, will be uh, done, and also the improvement of data management practices like metadata annotation and management of clinical data. Um, <clears throat> uh, at, at the end, I would like to uh, bring some acknowledgments. So the proteomics team w uh, was, of course, of a lot of help at EBI. Um, Yasset, Andrew, uh, Tobias, and from Phenomenal Advance to Pablo Moreno, um, <clears throat> and from the Embassy Cloud, David Ocaña, and uh, the Embassy Cloud Portal, Jose, and uh, from, from the Alexir Germany side, um, the OpenMS team, uh, namely Oliver, Timo, and Julianos, and um, Martin Eisenacher from, uh, from uh, Universität Bochum, and the MDC, uh, Chris Bilo, and uh, at, at Welcome uh, Sanger, and now I are uh, Jotty and Hendrik. <clears throat> well, thank you.